<clears throat> we chant the four great Bodhisattva vows. Sentient beings are numberless, we vow to help them all. Delusions are countless, we vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite, we vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless, we vow to embody it. So we'll begin with the 15 minutes of seated meditation.
Keep meditating too. <clears throat> We chant the Gatha on opening the sutras. This Dharma, incomparably profound and minutely subtle, is rarely encountered even in hundreds of thousands of millions of ages. Now we see it, hear it, hold and maintain it. May we completely realize the true mind of all Buddhas. All right. Relax, sit back, take your shoes off if you have them on, smoke them if you got them. Probably can't do that, right? This past Sunday, as Breyer wisely pointed out last week, was actually when we celebrate Vesak. Full moon, fourth lunar month, I guess, May 15th this past year, this year. So what is Vesak? It's when we commemorate the birth, awakening, and parinirvana, i.e. death of uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. And we celebrate it not because it's a reason to have a party, but to remind ourselves of what we're doing when we're in practice. And that we should be in practice at all times. The Buddha wasn't only teaching when he was sitting on a cushion with Ananda busy writing out every word so he could transcribe it later. That didn't happen. His whole life was his practice, just as ours should be. So Vesak is a way for us to remember the entirety of life as practice from birth through death of physical body. Now, what was interesting also about this past Sunday was that there were a couple of groups in our order, one from Bar Harbor, Maine, and one from Oneida, New York, who shared a precept ceremony. And precepts, in a very small nutshell are the vows that we take of how we're going to live our practice as we go about our day, sitting, lying, standing, reclining, whatever it is, that's our practice. We go throughout the day, saving all beings, being mindful of what's happening right now, trying to enable others to more readily see what's happening right here, right now. And precept ceremonies are, are interesting because they're one of those things that it's like welcoming members to the family. It's like a wedding or a birth or something along those lines where there's this existing collection of sentient beings and we welcome more sentient beings into our group. Now, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And the Sangha is, it's really easy to think of the Sangha as just those with whom we practice. And in an immediate sense, practicing with a Sangha enables us to do things that when we're 
in the midst of the worldly, it's easier for us to remember the Dharma and the Buddha. However, we're not supposed to limit our practice and be the good guys only when we're in the presence of other Sangha members. We have to take it with us wherever we go, off the cushion, out of the presence of the uh, practitioner and Sangha. But precepts are a good way to demonstrate um, a commitment, wanting to be part of that family even though you're not separated from the rest of humanity when you take the precepts and join a specific sangha because you're not it's not the universe minus one you're still enrolled in the big picture maha maha sangha big big community, as well as the uh, practitioners that you meet with on a weekly basis or daily basis. And uh, that's been addressed, of course, in the uh, Pali Kanan's uh, Upada Sutta. Uh, there's a conversation between Lord Buddha and his disciple Ananda, in which Ananda enthusiastically declares, this is half of the holy life, Lord. Admirable friendship, admirable companionship, admirable, admirable camaraderie. The Buddha replies, don't say that, Ananda. Don't say that. Admirable friendship, admirable companionship, admirable camaraderie is actually the whole of holy life. When a monk has admirable people as friends, companions, and comrades, he can be expected to develop and pursue the Eightfold Path. A lot of times you'll hear that translated as uh, spiritual friendship is the entirety of the practice. Uh, I, of course, eschewing the word spiritual as often as possible, uh, prefer admirable. Spiritual is a little sort of new agey woo where you can't really pin down what exactly it means, but it sounds really good. Admirable, however, that's pretty concrete. This is as someone who is worthy of your admiration. This is someone who's setting a standard to which you would like to live up to. That was grammatically erroneous, but we'll let it go. There are other places uh, throughout the canon, both Mahayana and Pali, where you'll hear uh, phrases like good friends, uh, like uh, Huineng is said to have uh, used in the Platform Sutra. Uh, there's others where it's addressed to good son sons and daughters. It all comes back to this admirable friendship. And since our admirable friends aren't necessarily just in the screen that you're looking at right now. We can find our common humanity, our common Buddha nature in all sentient beings, whether they're you know, quote unquote, Buddhists or, uh, or not. We need to see the humanity, the bodhisattvahood, the Buddhahood 
in everyone we encounter. We need to treat everyone as our admirable friend, comrade, companion, good son and daughter, whatever it might be. We need to extend our practice out to the, like I said, Maha Maha Sangha. There's another little bit that I want to uh, read you from uh, Sutra of Perfect Enlightenment, aka SPE, for those in the know. And um, if you're not familiar with that sutra, I strongly recommend that you find a copy of it and read it. It's not all that long and it, it contains some great nuggets of wisdom he enunciated. So this is the section uh, for Maitreya. So it goes, Maitreya, you should know that the non-attainment of great liberation by all sentient beings is only due to desire. Therefore, they are drawn into birth and death. If you can separate yourself from like and dislike, as well as desire, hatred, and ignorance, you will all perfect the Buddha's way and permanently destroy the two hindrances without needing any distinctions in nature. Seek a teacher who has the correct awakening, practice the vow to arouse, to arouse the body mind, rely on great nirvana, the bodhisattvas in the ten directions all appear in the world of samsara. Replying to the greatly compassionate vow, present practitioner, present practitioners, as well as sentient beings of the degenerate age, should strive to eliminate all attached views and directly return to great perfect enlightenment. All sentient beings. It's not all sentient beings minus one or minus Sangha. It's not everybody else and those of us cool people who've taken the precepts. Our precepts are our life, both within the Sangha of fellow practitioners and in the fellowship of humanity and all sentient beings. We need to help guide people to the great perfect enlightenment that's already there. They just don't realize it. So welcome to the Sangha those of you in those two groups that had precept ceremonies this past weekend. Welcome to the Sangha, anyone in this group who would like to take precepts. And welcome everyone to that Maha Maha Sangha of all sentient beings. All right, so back to 15 minutes of seated meditation.
we'll chant the Heart Sutra. to that point in the evening where we make our personal dedications of merit. As always, uh, I will go through a list of some people that I'm aware of that we would like to dedicate merit to and uh, leave a space for anyone uh, whom you would like to add. All sentient beings are one seamless body and pass quickly from birth to death. We remember those who cared for us and are gone. Those who are ill, those who are at war, who are hungry and who are in pain. May they heal and have peace. We especially would like to dedicate our service to 
Joanne Sheridan, Brianna Bailey Sheridan, Barry, Maureen, Mrs. Guy, Perry, Mike Gingy Wood, Dylan Jacobson, anyone else? People of Sri Lanka. The people of Sri Lanka, indeed. Bring from the war in Ukraine. All beings in the 10 directions, subject to the greed, hatred, and delusion of themselves and others. All Buddhas throughout space and time, all honored ones, Bodhisattva, Mahasattvas, wisdom beyond wisdom, Maha Prajna Paramita. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature. Do not squander your time by night or day. And thank you for joining us.